What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're going to be breaking down the five best quarterback drills that will take your skills to the next level. Let's get started. All right, guys, before we get into these drills, I want to talk to you about a great opportunity we are offering this offseason. We are traveling out to eight more states across the U.S. for two-day-long QB and wide receiver camps. Next up on our camp tour, we're going to be coming out to Honolulu, Hawaii, and Boston, Massachusetts. Both of those camps are completely sold out, but then we'll be coming out to Cleveland, Ohio, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, New Jersey, Denver, Colorado, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys would like some more information on that, how you can sign up to attend to one of our camps and work with myself and my staff of coaches. Check out that very first link in the description below, fellas, where you can get all the information. It's a two-day long camp, eight hours of training total, and all of those cities mentioned. So again, very first link in that description below. Let's get back to this video. All right, guys, so the first drill we're going to be talking about today is something called a QB walk. So this is going to work on your entire throwing motion as a whole, your throwing mechanics, and ultimately your throwing sequence. So when you go to throw, being able to generate throw power, because that's what this drill is going to help you with. Because honestly, like if you want to play football at the next level, you want to play at the collegiate level, you guys need to have arm strength. There are certain throws that you have to make on the field. Like for example, you're on the opposite hash, you're going to have to throw a 10 to 12 yard out to the field on time. And that throw requires arm strength. So you need to be able to generate something called torque. And torque comes from separating your upper body from your lower body, aka hip and shoulder dissociation, which is honestly just a fancy word for separation. You want to separate your upper body from your lower body to generate power. So you guys all probably know this is like kind of the, the Dak Prescott dance. Everybody has seen this before, I'm sure, at one point or another. But what does it actually work on? And like I said, it works on being able to produce torque to help with arm strength. So when you guys go to throw, the, the whole recipe for power is three specific parts. It's your throwing sequence. So the first part of your sequence is is going to be the front stride. We need to get my front stride down in the grass. I don't want to overstride. I want that thing almost stepping down and in place. So now, when I take a step with that front foot, I want my shoulders to be rotating back. Like it doesn't need to be a perfect L, but you need some kind of close of the front side. So when you're in a good base, you can transfer that weight, get those hips to go through before your shoulders, creating that whipping effect, which will give you more power and more velocity on the ball. But the hips have to go through the throwing motion before your upper half does. Very similar to how a hitter in baseball hits a baseball. He takes a step with the front foot, the hips come through, bat trails behind. Baseball hitters and quarterbacks generate power the exact same way. So to increase this arm strength, there's an easy at-home drill you can do. You do not need a partner. You don't even need a football for this drill. So you need two cones, and honestly, you don't even need two cones. You just need a 10-yard space. So for this QB walk, I'm a right-hander. So how this is going to go is you're going to start out, you're going to have your weight on your back foot, your right foot, and we're just simply going to go, this is the rhythm of it. Left, right, left. Then you're going to reset, left, right, left, working on that stride, hip rotation transfer in the first part of that sequence, you keeping your upper body back as your hips go through. I'm going to show you how this drill is going to look full speed. This is a great daily drill quarterbacks can do to increase their arm strength and help you guys create that whipping effect with your throwing mechanical sequence. So again, I'll show you semi full speed, then I'll show up full speed. Again, it's left, right, left. As you step, weight transfers through, shoulders go back all the way through that 10 yard space. Alright guys, so one of the main things that college coaches look for nowadays in a collegiate quarterback, especially at the Division I level, is extend playability. You know, in the days of, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, all these top tier quarterbacks being able to extend plays at the next level, everybody's going to start looking for a quarterback who can do the exact same thing. So what does extending the play actually mean? That means doing throws that college coaches don't, ex or coaches just in general, expect you to make. The mistake that a lot of quarterbacks will put, you know, on their highlight tape, you know, when they're trying to stand out to coaches, they'll just put routine throws. Like they'll just put a play where, you know, you take a three-step drop, you hit like this post right over the middle, the receiver's wide open, he catches it and goes scores. And yeah, it's great. Everybody wants to throw touchdowns, but that's not necessarily, you know, a highlight, especially that's going to stand out to a division one college coach. So they want to see you make throws where you drop back, you're getting pressure from your right guard, you move off platform and you hit a throw, you step up in the pocket, you throw while you're getting hit. But those throws don't just happen magically. You have to do certain things that make you comfortable making those uncomfortable type throws. And that's what this next kind of drill circuit is going to do. So you need a towel. You could do all of these drills with a football, I mind you, but if you don't have a football, you don't have somebody to throw to, this is easy that you can do at home with a towel. The re reason I like using a towel is it's great for extension, which helps you with accuracy, right? So like if you, when you guys throw go to throw, and let's say I got, I'm on sequence, my hips are coming through, shoulders are back, and I finish through on the throw, I don't want to kind of short arm it. I don't want to come across 
across my body, I want to extend it to target. So when you're doing drills with a towel, you want to hear that whip of the towel because that helps you extend. The towel will not whip unless you extend. So that's why we work on the towel. And it's also great for reps because it doesn't put a lot of pressure on your shoulder or you know your elbow or what have you. Okay, so we're going to be going through just a series of footwork movements that will get you comfortable with those off-platform pocket throws where you got to drift back, you got to step up, and still be able to throw and fire this ball out of your hands. So it's three specific movements. So you're going to be doing two sets of four reps on each one of these movements. First movement, we're going to be mimicking like I'm getting outside pressure first. So we're going to step up, step back, and then throw. So it's going to be outside pressure first. You step up, guard pressure from your backside to the inside. So your guard's getting beat to the inside. You step back, and then we throw. That's the first movement. I'm going to show you all these movements full speed. Then, second movement we're going to do is the reverse. We got guard pressure inside first. So you're going to step back, tackle pressure outside, step up, shoot through and throw. Then we're going to be working a movement where I got tackle pressure from the right to the outside. You're going to step up, guard pressure from the right inside, step forward and throw. Each one of those movements, and again, maybe you don't do those exact movements you know, perfectly in sequence in a game, but I guarantee you, you're going to have to step up. I guarantee you, you're going to have to drift back or step forward and getting yourself comfortable with those movements, going through those, going through that rhythm, actually throwing after is going to help you guys tremendously in a live game situation. So I'm going to show you how each one of these drills is going to look full speed. All right, guys, so now another thing that college coaches will look for, especially the Division One level, is quarterbacks, obviously, like we said, who can extend the play, but extending the play is more to more than just, you know, moving around in the pocket or pulling the ball down to run. They are looking for quarterbacks who can actually throw on the run. So this next drill that we're going to talk about is great to help you with your throwing on the run sequence. So when you throw from the pocket, obviously, like, what do we want? Remember our throwing sequence. We talked about that with the very first drill that we discussed. What do you want to go through before the shoulders and before the ball? Obviously, your front stride has to get down, but you want your hips to be able to go through before the shoulders and the ball. That's all that you really want. Now, on the run, you want the same exact thing to happen, just it is a different step. So if I'm on the move, let's say I'm throwing on the run to the right side over here, right? I'm throwing on the run. I want to take my throwing side foot. So for you righties, it's your right foot. For you lefties, it's your left foot. And you want to point the toe where exactly where you want the ball to go. So like, let's say I'm throwing like an inside breaking route. I don't want to step over here towards the sideline. I want to step here inside, point my toe because that will get my hips to the target. Now, as I step and I get my hips turned, I want my shoulders to separate back. I want to be able to rotate back here. Shoulders are loaded and then I kick through same time the ball comes through. So it's similar to that throwing sequence from the pocket. You take a step with your front foot, hips are going through, shoulders are back. Now you're just on the move. You could actually stay balanced. On the run, obviously, it's important to step with that throwing side foot to get your hips there, to get to that dissociation. So this drill helps with that. So all you're doing, you need a partner to throw to and I'm going to show you how this will look full speed in a second, you're going to balance on your throwing side foot. So my right foot is my throwing side. I'm going to balance on that. My non-throwing side foot is going to stay tucked at a 90 degree angle. So I'm going to be here and all I'm going to do without moving my left foot, I'm going to rotate and separate my hands. And as my arm goes through, I'm going to kick through balancing on that throwing side foot to work on the timing of that throwing sequence when I am on the move to get that hip and shoulder separation point. So I'm going to show you this is going to look full speed. There's a great drill to work on. You're throwing on the run mechanics, which will help you stand out to a college coach. All right, guys, so this next drill that we're going to talk about is going to help with the deep ball distance that you have and honestly throwing a better deep ball to a wide receiver downfield. Now, something that I can tell you about College level wide receivers. If you have never worked with a college level wide receiver, you will eventually get to that point. But if you're a high school guy, it's it's a totally different speed. Like I remember being, you know, eighth grade freshman, you know, coming out trying to play college ball or hoping to play college ball one day, and I would go work out with a quarterback coach, and he would have college level, NFL level wide receivers there, and we'd be throwing routes, right? 
that was a totally different speed. That is a speed that I have never, I had never seen before, and it was a total culture shock. And you realize how fast and how good of athletes those wide receivers at that next level are. So as a quarterback, what does that mean to us? That means obviously we have to get the ball out a whole hell of a lot faster than what we were doing. I remember throwing go balls, right? We'd be on the 50 going in, right? And those guys obviously like you're throwing a four verts fade, like you're trying to drop this ball on like maybe the 10, maybe on the goal line, right? And I knew I could throw a 40, 50 yards at the time, but if I'm sitting there and I take a three step drop, I hitch up and I go to throw and I'm taking my time, that wide receiver is going to be sitting there waiting for that ball. Yeah, I threw it 40 yards. Yeah, I threw it 50 yards, but the timing was off. What I needed to do, and this is something that took, it, it changed the way I approached throwing a deep ball entirely, is I needed to honestly, dude, I would take like just a one step hitch up and throw it, but with a ton of air and put it to the exact same spot, but earlier and let him go chase it down. That's the end of the game. The receiver's job is to get open. Our job is to put it to a spot. So when you get to that collegiate level, they're looking for quarterbacks who can do that, who can get the ball out of their hands, but most importantly, put the ball up with some air. So this drill helps you do that. Now, to throw with air, what do you think are some important things? That's what you always have to ask yourself about the different types of throws. Number one, you need to arc your shoulder, right? Number two, when you let go of the ball, you need to snap your wrist to the top. Now that's pretty basic advice. That's day one, you know, eight year old advice, in my opinion. But to get to that shoulder arc position and have that fluid motion over the top, your base plays a role. So many guys, when they throw deep, they'll take this quick drop, they'll hitch up, but they leave a lot of weight onto their front side when they go to throw. So when they go to arc their shoulder, it's awkward. They push the ball, their leg locks out. You need to get your weight loaded to your back leg. So I go to hitch up onto a throw. I need to get my weight fully back. Chin angle should be straight. Back foot is under my hip. So now it's easy to arc my shoulder. This next drill helps with that. So all you're going to be doing, it's a simple crossover drill. You need a partner who's maybe going to stand 20 to 30 yards away. All we are going to do, you're going to be here, good base. You're going to cross over. So you're going to be here, left, right, and you're going to balance on one foot. Because when you balance on one foot, guess what? It's inside your frame. If you cross over and you're super wide, you won't be able to balance on one foot. So it puts the back foot where it needs to be. So we're going here, left, right, balance on one foot. You're going to lightly place the front foot down. Only toes. Not like this, only toes. Arc that shoulder and let that ball go. I'm going to show you that's going to look full speed, but that's a great drill to work on you getting more air on the ball and letting that receiver chase that thing down. I'm going to show you this is going to look full speed. All right, guys. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to you about is not necessarily a drill. It's more of what you should be doing exercise-wise in the gym for a quarterback. Now, a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people think quarterbacks should be lifting just like any other regular football player or even sometimes bodybuilders on the field. That is completely incorrect. Quarterback is a very, very unique position for a very, very unique individual. But you need to be doing the things that are going to actually help you performance-wise on the field. So if you guys would like some quarterback gym stuff, gym material that we have, just post that in the comment section below. I'll shoot you over a quick link like I always do um, about any type of quarterback gym workouts, questions that you have, anything specific. But most important areas to emphasize as a quarterback is what do you think? Your core, your legs, and mobility in your upper half. A lot of, I see quarterbacks doing it all the time, doing bench press, overhead press, doing curls. There's no athletic benefit for that. Maybe for other positions, right? Whatever. And I get it. You need to build size as a football player because we're getting hit. And the best way to absorb hits is by having some muscle mass. But fellas, do not get it twisted. That is not going to help you with arm strength. Up here, you got to be mobile up here. So doing band exercises, light stability stuff, you know, working with bands, anything that's going to make you functionally strength with your shoulder, but still keep range of motion. And you should be trying to generate power and explosion from your legs, from your hips, and from your core. So, you know, medicine ball, Russian twists, squats, trap bar deadlifts, things that are going to make you power, power cleans, things that are going to make you explosive at the lower half, have a strong core, which will help you with posture, rotation, everything that you could think of. That's going to make you a better quarterback in the gym. So again, make sure we're not doing the incorrect exercises. If you want to play at that next level, you need to perform. Yes, you need to be big. Yes, you need to be tall, but you need to have performance on the field. And you need to be an explosive playmaker. That ball's got to jump off your hand and you need to make plays. You need an explosion, strong core, strong legs. So again, if you want some gym material, just post that in the comment section below. I'd be happy to help you. All right, guys, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like to come out and train with us in eight different states this offseason, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our off-season training camps. I'll see you guys next time.